In this video, I'll show you exactly how to add cinematic lighting and atmosphere to your scene in Envision. By the end, you'll have animated your sky, added fog, and fine-tuned the mood with camera movement and lens effects. To start, let's first choose the views we want to render. Since this is a real-time render engine, what you see in the viewport is the same as the final output. Make sure the view captures fully animated elements, shaking trees, moving clouds, and people. This will all contribute to the final animation where all elements will move around to tell your story. Once we find a view we like, we can go to the camera tab and save it by clicking the plus button. Let's take a look at the camera settings. Usually the first thing I do is straighten the verticals. After that, we have one of the most important settings for any camera, the lens. This controls how wide the camera's angle will be. We can choose between focal length, which works similarly to real-world photography, or view angle, which is set to 60 by default. Reducing this value narrows the view, while increasing it widens it. However, going too wide can distort the perspective. So a value around 60 usually works well when we want a broader view. As you can see, changing this has affected the framing, so we might need to adjust it slightly again. Let's create another camera and explore how to use narrow lenses. In this case, I'll use focal length, just like in real-world photography. Values like 100 or even 120 work well for portraits, close-up shots, or when we want more depth of field. One thing you'll notice here is that some of the white areas appear too bright. We can fix that easily by lowering the highlight compression in the color corrections tab. Be careful though, if we reduce it too much, the image can start to look flat. That's why it's important to find the right balance and maybe even compensate with a small boost in contrast. Let's animate that camera. Click on the animation wheel, then drag the camera onto the timeline. Basically, the timeline shows the animation in seconds, and it lets us decide exactly when changes should happen during the animation. Let me show you how that works. If I move the slider to the beginning of the timeline, where the animation will start, then select the camera and enable depth of field, I can set a custom focus at that point. Later on, I can move to a different time in the timeline and change the focus point, which will create a smooth transition between the two. To make the depth of field much more visible, let's decrease the F number. Lower values like 1.4, 1.2, or even less will make the depth of field more noticeable. Now, let's move to the end of the camera animation, at the fourth second, where I'd like to shift the focus to the main building. Create another key point here by clicking on the point icon. This way, the focus will shift over these four seconds from the building in front to the main building. However, I don't want to keep the camera still and only change the focus so I'll slightly move it to the right by holding shift while we're on the fourth second. This creates a subtle left to right movement, giving us a more intricate animation that nicely reveals the main building. Now that we have the views, it's time to move on to the lighting. Lighting is the element in our projects that not only illuminates, but also shapes the objects and sets the mood. Navigate to the environment tab. The generic environment is applied by default to all views if we don't want different lighting or environment conditions. Let's create a new one specifically for the camera. Click the plus button and rename it, Clear Sky in my case. Then, drag this environment above the camera in the timeline. Now, for the first four seconds, that environment will be used. To customize it, go to the Environment tab on the right. Starting with the main element, the sun, we can easily enable or disable it. We can also control the sun's intensity, but while the camera's automatic exposure is on, this won't affect its brightness. If we want to tint the sun, for example with a yellowish color, we can adjust its color here. However, I prefer to keep it without any added tint. Another interesting parameter is the sun disk size. Increasing it creates very soft shadows, while decreasing it makes the shadows sharper. The position of the sun can be controlled either by its horizontal and vertical angles or by its geographical position in time. For this project, I will use the first option, which lets us control the direction the light comes from and the vertical angle. Once we're happy with the customization, we can save the changes to that environment. Let's drag the camera we created earlier onto the timeline and create another environment. I'll call it Clouds A and drag it onto the timeline as well. You'll notice that a new segment automatically appears between the two environments. This segment creates a smooth animated transition if there are any differences between them. However, since this environment is intended for the second camera, I'll reduce the transition to zero. I'll also tweak the lighting to suit that particular view. Sometimes, we need to follow the real sun location precisely, but in this case, we'll allow ourselves some freedom. What we will do here is add clouds, and even animate them in the next few minutes. First, enable the Clouds option. There are a few self-explanatory parameters here, like density. Increasing it will create more clouds. Variety controls the types of clouds, while Cirrus adds a layer of soft, high, and transparent Cirrus clouds, 
For this animation, we'll make the clouds dissolve over time. So I'll start with dense clouds, and maybe adjust the variety as well to animate the cloud types. I'll save the changes and then create another variation called Clouds B. This will be the end state for the clouds animation. Here I'll decrease the cloud density so they gradually dissolve and reveal the sky during the animation. The variety will also be reduced to animate the change in cloud types. You'll notice that the longitude and latitude offsets can shift the cloud positions. Using the latitude parameter, we can make the clouds move forward. Finally, to add sun animation, I want the sun to go down by the end of the camera animation, so I'll lower the altitude angle and save the environment. Keep in mind that the camera's automatic exposure will compensate when the sun goes down, so the animation will stay bright throughout the entire movement. If we want a dark night at the end, we can simply disable the automatic exposure of the camera. To create the light animation, we need to drag that environment onto the timeline. You'll notice the same automatic transition appears as before, but this time, we won't reduce its length to zero, because this transition will represent the movement of the sun and clouds between the two environments we created. In fact, we will reduce the length of the environments themselves to zero and leave only the transition active above the camera. Okay, let's explore another way to animate clouds. I already created one more camera view for that project in the same way we did before. I will drag it to the timeline and disable the automatic exposure. Go to the environment and create another one. I will call it HDRI. Drag it over the camera. Navigate to the environment tab on the right and disable the sun. This time, we will rely on an image for the lighting. To do that, I will go to Chaos Cosmos. Choose an HDR spherical image and just drag and drop it. Pay attention that next to the sun option in the environment settings, we have a tab called HDRI. From here, we can rotate the image horizontally and achieve a different look with each degree of rotation. If we want to emphasize the overcast sky, we can enable the haze option and adjust some of the parameters to our liking. Visibility range controls how dense the haze appears, while opacity determines how transparent it is. However, I think a night sky will be more suitable here, so I'll navigate to the evening skies and experiment with a few options until I'm satisfied. Once I like the result, I'll save the changes and check if the exposure works well for that particular sky. Then, I'll switch back to the timeline and create another environment for the variation in the animation. I'll rename it to HDRIB, for example, and slightly adjust the rotation. This will be the end position of the sky. Drag it onto the timeline. Again, we'll rely only on the linear transition, so we'll reduce the segments of the environments to zero. Now, let's work on the lighting. Normally, all lights you add in your design software carry over to Envision automatically. In this case, the model was exported before lights were added, but no worries. Envision has a variety of artificial lights we can use, rectangular, disc, and spherical. First, I'll start with a spherical light. To create one, just click in the viewport, hold, and drag. We can easily control the color, making it warmer or cooler, and even save the color to a swatch for later use. The intensity setting controls the brightness of the light. Lower values will reduce it, higher values will increase it. From the drop-down menu for the light type, we can switch to any of the other available options. We can also control the radius of the light. I'll use this light by holding shift and moving it into the interior to create some general lighting inside the building, since I just want to add some warm lighting. Looking through the camera, we can see that the intensity needs to be increased. I'll also create a disc light to light the trees from below. You'll notice that the settings are the same. If you have already added lights in your design app, they will also transfer directly into Envision. For more in-depth lighting tips, check out our artificial lights tutorial. I'd also like to light the people in the foreground, as it currently looks like there's no light on them at all. To fix that, I will create a rectangular light and rotate it to point towards them, just like a softbox in photography. This will help illuminate the objects in the foreground. Try cinematic lighting and animation in your next Envision project, and if you like this video, then I think you'd love this one.